Welcome everyone to the Montessori Family Alliance Tuesday webinar. This is going to be a great day. I'm glad you're here for this, uh, for this presentation. If you're new, welcome. If you have watched us before, welcome back. So we're glad you're here, everyone. And um, I want to introduce our guest for today. Tracy Hall has been on our broadcast before, and we're so glad to have you back, Tracy. Thank you so much, Lauren. I'm thrilled to be here with you. Very nice. Tracy is an infant toddler teacher and has been for quite a long time. She can tell you the number of years. Um, she works for the Center for Guided Montessori Studies, and that's a training program online, and mostly online, a little bit face-to-face, -face, but mostly online, and um, probably does some other things besides that. I just <laughs> learned that she has four sons who are all um, on their own, more or less, couple in college and two on their own. Mm -hmm. And uh, she is so good at what she does with these infants and toddlers that she is going to share with you today, we're calling it Positive Guidance, Three Rules for Toddlers. And so, Tracy, if you want to get us started, we'll, we'll start talking about that. Wonderful. Thank you, Lorna, for the introduction. Um, when we started talking, Lorna and I, about what I might share with you, I thought of this topic because so many parents, um, you know, if you've, and you've had your baby, you've been um, thinking about things like eating and sleeping and just supporting their growth. And then all of a sudden, they start to tell you no. <laughs> and yes. have I? Yes, they, they start to say no. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think that um, Ellen Galinsky talks about the stage of parenting as the stage of authority, where um, with our toddlers, we need to figure out what kind of guidelines we're going to have for them and um, how to best help them. And these rules um, that I'm going to introduce to you today work really well in my classroom, but I also have found that there are rules that my husband and I were able to embrace together because we could each interpret the rule our own way and still be clear with our children that these are the guidelines. This is how we, we help you. Nice, nice. And you know, Tracy, I know that that's important because, you know, even though we get married to someone or we partner with someone in a relationship and have a child, and we think we're pretty much on the same page, sometimes we're not. And so if we have some guidelines that will work for people that may not really share the same parenting style, um, or background, then it's really helpful because it helps that child get a more consistent message. I think so too. And as we talk about this first rule, um, this is the this particular rule that we had um, was one that um, my husband and I interpreted slightly differently. <laughs> this was a place where we um, were a little different in our perspectives, but we were still able to guide them together. Nice. So when I'm with young children, I'm always trying to decide um, as I'm watching them and really observing how they're um, playing or interacting is, is when do I need to intervene? Because yeah. there's many times that, that they can be playing and doing things and they, um, they don't need us. They can engage independently. Um, so these questions really help me decide. So my first question is, will what they're doing cause harm to themselves like is it too risky right and i think this question is important to think about in terms of children stretching themselves um, to become more independent and more capable um, there's a, a woman um deborah figriley who was one of my teachers who says that there is there is some dignity in danger so we want to let them take a little bit of a risk but not too big of a risk. So for example, balancing on um, a low, um, like a, a little low board or something that, or on some rocks one after the other would be an appropriate risk for a toddler, right? Um, yeah. But balancing on a wall up over cement without our support would not, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I would say my husband and I would differ on how tall the wall could be yeah. <laughs> before we decided it was too risky, right? He had a different 
a different layer than me. And that's good for children to have, you know, different relationships and different people supporting them different ways. But when um, I thought their behavior might be hurtful for, to them, I would intervene. That's a time that I would intervene. Sure. And um, in that case, um, I would say to the child, be safe. That's mm. that's the rule about that behavior. Be safe. And then, you know, children really don't know what we mean when we say be safe. Yeah. So then I would follow up with what I wanted them to do. Because sometimes when we stop children, they don't know what to do next. They don't know what the um, behavior we want looks like. Right. And so, um, you know, I many toddlers I have known will stand on a table. <laughs> so <laughs> I think I don't think that's safe. That's not a choice I recommend. Um, okay. So I will say to them, you know, be safe. And then I'll tell them what I want, which is put your feet on the floor. So that would Perfect. be a type of positive guidance. Yeah. Absolutely. I think sometimes we are very good at telling children what we don't want, but we're not so great right. at telling them what we do want, you know? And you're mm -hmm. so right that little ones, they don't know. They don't know what we want. So we have to um, really think about that and think about it in a positive way rather than no, 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 stop, 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 don't, 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 <laughs> you know, let them know what it is that's, that's okay. Yeah. That no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think too um, that they are much more willing to collaborate with us when we're giving them information about what we want to happen next and it's yeah. framed in something they can do. They like to do things a lot more than they like to be told not to do things. Right. right. So when <laughs> I'm not talking not. about the table, but just the floor, that can be helpful. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go to the next question. So if, if my child was just um, getting into a drawer of maybe plastic Tupperware containers um, and I decided they weren't gonna harm themselves, then I wouldn't intervene, okay? Um, but I would ask myself another question, like will what they, they're they doing hurt someone else? Mm. So the thing that may happen sometimes with toddlers is um, one child will be playing with a, um, a Brio train set and the other child will come over and, and grab part of the train because they really want it, right? And maybe they're tugging back on, and forth with, uh, on that piece of train. So yeah. then that's the time when I'm going to say, oh, someone might get hurt here. I think they need me to intervene. You know, when mm -hmm. they're, so maybe, you know, sometimes they go over and take the Brio train track and nobody minds, right? right. In that case, there's, there's no reason for me to intervene. Or maybe they're even kind of working it out gently together. I don't think anyone's going to get hurt. I don't need to help. But when they're pulling back and forth, and I think someone might tip over because, you know, toddlers aren't yet very stable, yeah. um, then I'm, I'm going to intervene. And in that case, I'm going to suggest to them and say, oh, be kind, be kind. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to give them information about how they could be kind. So in this case, I might tell them both, um, you may put the Brio track in my hand. I'm always amazed toddlers will often do that even though they've been struggling over it. I think they recognize a little bit of our authority in that moment. Um, and then I let them know, you know, I, I'll talk to them about who had it. You know, oh, I see, you know, um, Josie had the, tr the Brio train track and, you know, Karen, you really want it. I see that. Um, and, and then I might say, but right now it's Josie's turn. So Karen, you'll need to wait until she's all done. And then if they have language, you know, I might have been encouraging them to talk then, but I'm kind of was thinking of children that without language since they were struggling. Sure. Um, and I might let them know, you know, Rosie, you could tell Karen when you're done. So mm -hmm. all of that, I'm telling them what, what I see they're wanting and what they can do. Um, and I've intervened about being kind. Yeah. I have a question for you. Sure. My question is, when, when toddlers are in struggles sometimes, because they don't necessarily have the language skills that a little bit older child would, and certainly not that we have, um, sometimes they actually physically try to, to do things. Like maybe they'll push or maybe they'll hit. 
And, and yes. of course, that answers this question, will this hurt someone else? Yes, it would mm -hmm. if they push or if they hit. So how do you handle that kind of situation where it's not an object that they're struggling over, it's a conflict between the two children? And that, that is very typical behavior for toddlers. And I, I always want to reassure parents, if you're the child who's doing the hitting, or well, not you're the child, but your child is the one who's doing the hitting, <laughs> or the pushing, or even the biting, right? Yeah. Um, that, um, that, that unfortunately, when they don't have language, that's typical behavior. And we want to help them learn other ways. And so we can use positive guidance to help them learn other ways and know that and feel good about helping them learn a different way, not get so um, not feel ashamed that they just don't know yet. You know, they just don't know. And so um, I would say to that child, you know, say a child has hit another child. Hmm. Um, I would walk over to the two children, and I would um, I would say something like, "Oh, um, maybe maybe the one who got hit is crying." You know, mm -hmm. "Oh, I see, Josh, I see you're crying, Susan. That hitting hurt, Josh. We need to be gentle or be kind." Um, and I do I do gesture. <laughs> this means yeah. be gentle. Sign language. So I do that a lot. Um, you know, to our friends and it's a lot I might say um, oh look at his face that looks like it really hurt him you know, mm -hmm. we need to be kind um, I'm it depends with toddlers because um, younger toddlers are really interested in cause and effect so mm -hmm. they could even hit someone because it causes that other someone to make a big noise they don't yeah. really understand yet that it the other person is hurting so that's why we talk about it hurting we okay. might even, I might suggest they get a tissue for the other child, but mm -hmm. I have to be careful. If the child is really interested in cause and effect, they could even hit someone because then they get to go get a tissue. <laughs> so <laughs> <Right. you know. laughs> um, we want to encourage empathetic behavior and, um, and then be aware of, of how that particular child is responding. Okay, I have one other thing on this same topic, and that is sometimes, I've seen uh, a toddler or a young three-year-old um, hit or push their parent, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and again, I believe it's about that they, they want some kind of power. They want to, um, you know, whatever the parent is doing, they're not happy with it, obviously. <laughs> and, and they don't, have the words and they're trying to express that they're upset in some way, you know, or aren't getting what they want. So, so if you're a parent and there you are, I don't know, in the grocery store. <laughs> right, that's just the and, ultimate place. Oh yeah. <laughs> I never took my children to the grocery store when we were little. I'd wait until they went to sleep and have their dad be home and I would go to the grocery store. But. I if totally you did that too, Lorna. Like 11 o'clock at the grocery store is heaven. <laughs> and, and no, it's actually, for me, it was like, oh, okay, I get a little break here. <laughs> Anyways, what, what would you suggest that a parent do? Because obviously, if they're upset and they're pushing or kicking or um, hitting their parent in a grocery store, what, what, should, what would you suggest the parent do in that case? Um, I think one thing to keep in mind is that the ch children are usually not misbehaving in order to embarrass or upset us in the grocery store, even though right. we may be embarrassed and upset. Right? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the first step, I think, always begins with just taking a moment to calm yourself. Now, maybe your child is hitting you enough that you do need to hold their hand to stop them from hitting you. Um, you know, sometimes putting the, um, I'm not sure, you know, I'm trying to imagine this scenario. I might actually just move my body slightly back from where they're strapped into the cart for a second so they can't hurt me to disengage. Right. Um, you know, if my child were running, um, you know, in home, in my home, and for some reason I was doing something, I might give them, I might give them a little space and let go for them to calm down. Um, but to not assume that because they're striking out that they need to be punished. 
rather right. they really, they really need our help in learning how to communicate with them and they need our help in interpreting what's happening i think i've been i was really surprised at this research that is just being supported again and again that if we are warm and responsive to children if we're willing to be with them when they have those big kind of scary emotions like being angry or afraid or sad uh -huh. um, if we can keep them with us and and show them that we're calm and help them calm down um, they event that helps them learn to calm themselves mm -hmm. i think what's tricky about the idea of warm and responsive is responsive can sound like do what the child wants <laughs> Right. And that's not what I'm suggesting. You know, we do uh -huh. want to pay attention to what a child needs, but when they want a cookie, when they're hungry, that's more of a want than a need. And so we can be responsive by saying, oh, I see you really want that cookie. It is so yeah. disappointing. Yeah, you know, yes. it would be fun, fun to have one, but that's not something we can have now. And yeah. so that's what I mean by warm and responsive, acknowledging how they feel, and acknowledging yeah. what they want and then setting the limit. This is, yeah. we're not gonna do that. That's perfect. Did that answer Thank your you. question? Yeah, it sure did. Yeah, thank you. Um, so that we talked about the first rule where we're checking to see if they're gonna hurt someone else and then we say be safe. Um, we want them to be kind, whether it's to other children or to us, <laughs> we're gonna ask them to be kind. <laughs> And then um, this is the last question I ask, and that is about will what they're doing harm the environment? And although we talk a lot about, you know, the big picture environment, I'm thinking of that word to mean whatever space they're in. So, okay. um, for example, um, if I have hammers in the room for hammering on a um, pegs, which a lot of parents have pegs for pounding at yeah. home, um, yeah. and they pound on the window with a hammer, no. that's where I'm going to yeah <laughs> that, could hurt, that could hurt the environment right <laughs> and so in this case then um i'm watching to see if i need to intervene they were pounding on the pegs and even the side of the pegboard that was fine now they've run to the window and they're pounding with on the window and i'm going to intervene and i haven't really talked about this um i've been imagining myself but i don't think i've described it when i intervene I get down on their level. So I either squat down or sit down on the floor. So my face is right on the same level as the child's face. That's really saying, you know, I'm not being over you, I'm being with you while I'm talking to you. And then I wanna be right next to them. And that is something I have to, you know, I'm often with a busy group of children. I work with toddlers each day. And so I um, have to really remind myself, Tracy, wait till you get there. You know, wait till you get to them and then get down and say their name in a kind way. But I, um, you know, I really want to refrain from having my firmness be loaded into their name. You know, Joshua. I'm like, oh, no, his name doesn't feel so good to him. You know, yeah. so I say, oh, Joshua, Joshua, be gentle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The hammer is for pounding on the pegs. So again, I'm not really focusing on the window because particularly for toddlers, if I talk about what not to do, that just sort of gets them more interested in what not to do. <laughs> so I want, oh, okay, you know, she's, I want to tell them what to do. And yeah. so um, then they go back to hammering there and doing it at their level. Now I know when you're home, and I really remember this when I was home and I was cooking something particularly that required me to stay close to it. My children were aware yeah. <laughs> that they, you know, that wasn't as quick to leave the stove and that um, they could test a little bit more about, you know, what's okay at four o'clock rather than at 10 a.m. when we're on the floor together. Right. Um, but it doesn't, if we, what they learn if we don't go right over is she'll tell me a few times, get a little louder. And then finally she'll stop me and they'll wait until the yeah. final limit. And so yeah. I think it's better to go quick, you know, if you've got to get back to the stove, go ahead and go right over, let them know and come back. So. Yeah, yeah. I want to touch back on what you said about, um, you know, uh, saying something about the window instead of saying something about what the hammering is for. Um, 
somebody somewhere along the line, I wish I could tell you the name of the person or the research, said that actually when we say don't pound on the window, the negative word don't doesn't really compute. All they hear is pound on the window. And I yes, really truly really wish I could remember who, who or what, but um, I've always been very careful to put things in the positive because they don't, they, that negative thing doesn't compute with people. And it's, and it's not just toddlers, it's, you know, children, sometimes adults. Um, so it's another good reason for us to put things in the positive and put things into what we want them to do rather than what we don't want them to do. Yeah, and I think, I think that point also um, relates to how, you know, they have, certainly as toddlers, they have more um, language that they understand, their receptive language, than they have language that they can speak, their expressive language. Mm -hmm. But they're still listening to our long sentences and trying to find the words that they understand. Yeah. And so absolutely, a lot of the words seem like extra sounds we're making to them. Yeah. Um, so it also helps to, that's why I like these three rules. And um, Dr. Darla Miller is the one that first taught me, be safe, be kind. Um, and she also um, refers to be neat, which I'll talk about in a second. Okay. Um, but having those words really brief like that, so just it's a very simple rule, be safe. And, they'll, and toddlers will start to get where when I say be safe, they'll look at me like, I wonder what, you know, <laughs> what do I need to do about being safe? What's yeah. coming? And then telling them very briefly what we yeah. want. You know, put your feet on the floor, hammer on the pegs. Because I think as adults, we want to explain to them so they'll understand. So we'll say, you know, if you pound on the window, it might break the window and that's not a good idea. So come on over here. <laughs> but And we've lost them. Right. Um, or I hear people practice the positive guidance because they've learned about it and they really want to do it. So they'll say, be safe, hammer on the pegboard because we don't want to hammer on, the, you know, <laughs> again, the children. <laughs> just they stop. Just, yeah. Just yeah. A little. And I also want to say too, Tracy, some of the parents that are listening may be thinking, well, my child is three and a half. So this doesn't apply to three and a half year old. This is for toddlers. But actually, those young threes, you know, even into sometimes fours, they're still processing language and they still need to have some shorter answers, positive answers. This is what you do because they're still learning about what they can and cannot do. They're still learning about what the limits of their behavior is. So. And I, um, I think, so toddlers, you mentioned this before, you know, toddlers are interested in, in having a sense of their own power. Like they realized for the first time when they were 18 months old around, oh, like I'm my own person. And, you know, I can yeah. do things for myself. And, um, and they can either find a sense of that power by doing things um, for themselves, like, oh, I can put on my shoe or I can pound these pegs all the way down, or I can sponge the table, mm -hmm. or they can seek power um, by getting into a power struggle with us. Right. And so, you know, I think we want to always be just really clear that there's not a struggle here to have, you know, and so that can look like um, all the things we've been saying about giving them very simple rules, acknowledging how they're feeling and then setting that really simple limit for them. Um, but the three-year-old mm. that you were mentioning, yeah. um, they've just kind of figured out a, a bit about being autonomous or not, but yeah. now they're wondering about authority. Like, yes. Are you in charge or am I in charge? <laughs> and so they <laughs> they often come back and test us again, just like they did as younger toddlers. Um, and they're like, is and they're even wondering, is doing this aggressive or is it assertive? I mean, I don't think they have those words in their heads. <laughs> but that's what they're they're trying to figure out. And so if we can make sure that we have simple, clear limits with them too, that really helps them understand, oh, 
well, like you parents are in charge and I, <laughs> I can be in charge of my, but the rules come from you. I think that is good for three, three and four year olds too. So. Yeah, I agree. Totally. All right. So have we done our three rules or do we have more? Well, I'm going to click to the next slide. Those are the three rules. Okay. Um, I wanted to show you. So these are the things we say to the children. We've been talking okay. about them. We've been talking about be kind. Yes. And we've been talking about be safe. Mm -hmm. And we've been talking about be gentle. Um, the other thing that I say that's related to the environment that is a slightly different reason to um, intervene. Oh, I'm, I capitalized my I, but it should say be tidy. <laughs> and um, Darla Miller used to say be neat and um, my dad was really hard on me when I was a teenager about being neat and so I just like the word tidy better but you could say either one <laughs> <laughs> when I clean my house at home I'm saying oh I'm tidying up I'm not neat neat anymore um, okay, but you're giving us permission to use either neat or tidy whichever we want absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> okay um, so um, another thing that they do in the environment, it's really normal for toddlers. In fact, when, I have, when I'm working with young toddlers, I say inside my head, I'll be saying to myself, dumping and emptying is developmentally appropriate. This is how they're learning. Get it messing, you know, messing around with everything, this is how they're learning. So it's yeah. normal for them to do that. And then one way that we can help them um, with seeing creating order is we can have fewer things out hmm. and we can keep helping restore things like i can when they've taken everything off the shelf with those little toddlers and certainly with infants i'm going to put the things back but as they enter toddlerhood i'm going to start inviting them to be tidy too and sure. so they haven't they're not really damaging anything but they're they're strewing things around enough where they're not going to be able to find the things they want when they want them and i'm not going to be able to walk around the room <laughs> and so <laughs> we help each other um by being tidy so when a lot of things are out that's another thing i'll say to them oh let's be tidy i'm going to put the tray on the shelf can you bring the basket you know something like right that. yeah that's a that's a great thing for people to know too. You know, sometimes we let, let them take everything, everything off the shelves and and they are moving, they are exploring, that's developmentally appropriate, yes, but it's gonna be really hard to make order out of that. So they're gonna need some guidance and some help uh, with that piece of it. You're right, absolutely. Yeah. All right. So now we're at the end of our rules. Well, this has been great today. Thank you, Tracy. I know that the people that have been watching, the parents and teachers that have been watching, have picked up a lot of good tips about uh, language, positivity. I love the three rules because that helps guide us in our reactions um, to children. Because, oh, and I do think that we sometimes talk way, way, way too much to little children. And so I wanna emphasize that. Yes, you need to explain the hammer is for pounding the pegs in, but beyond that, you don't have to. You're done. <laughs> so, so that's terrific. Well, I hope to see you again on a webinar in the future. I appreciate it. And all of you, I'm glad that you joined us today and hope that you had a great time. We'll see you again next week. Thank you so much, Lorna. It was just a pleasure to be with you, and I, um, I hope it was helpful for those of you that are listening.